Hey guys, it's Vishal here again and I am going to tell you today how to play the violin, your first, very first lesson and in this particular short tutorial, I'm going to tell you the secret tips and the tricks that I learned which helped me kind of like, you know, understand how to play the violin and made me play the violin fast. To be realistic, as I told you before, violin is a difficult instrument but to be realistic, you can play a song in at least two to three weeks time. And hold on, I don't think you can see me. Okay, hi guys, I hope you can see me now. So guys, as I was saying, the tips and the tricks to play the violin are definitely a plenty. And a lot of us have been using these tips and tricks over the years to help us get better at the violin and to start. Now, the problem is that the violin is not an easy instrument and I might get shunned for saying so, but then it's not like the piano where the keys are out there, you know, you see the little black and white keys, the keys are out there. Or it's not like, for example, a guitar. If you look at a guitar, you see the guitar has these frets. Okay, basically all these frets, every single fret over here represents a single note, a single note of music. And now, okay, if I hold the first string of a guitar and if I press any fret on the first string, okay, so the key is you press something which you're going to pluck. So if I press this particular fret and if I strum this, I get a sound. And when I put my, move my finger over here, I get a sound, I get a sound, right? So basically the thing is, okay, that, let me go back to the other view. So the thing is that when you're looking at a guitar or when you're looking at a piano, when you're looking even at a mandolin, they all have frets, okay, to tell you where your fingers must go. But the violin is the most difficult instrument because it doesn't have frets, okay? Now look at this close up. You see this? There are no frets. You can put your fingers anywhere and you keep getting a continuum of sounds. It goes all the way up there. This would be the highest note on the violin. Okay? Now, you see, there are no frets on the violin which is what makes it difficult. You don't know where to place your fingers, right? But, we can always fix that with some tricks. So basically, I'm going to be showing you how to convert the violin into a fretted instrument. That's what I did when I went to my first violin class. You know what my teacher told me? He's like, see, listen, give me your violin. Okay. He tuned up my violin. Okay. I'll be linking to some tuner apps in the description, but be very careful while tuning your violin. Give your tuning to a professional. It could be me. It could be someone else. But your first tuning session, right, should be done by a professional. He will set right the strings. You can ask the music shop person himself. He'll do it for you. Right? But basically, after your violin is tuned, okay, you take your violin, okay, so he took my violin and he said, before you start playing anything, I want to do one thing. Then what he did was, he took sticky notes. You see this? This is a sticky note. He took sticky notes, okay, and he basically cut them up into bits of paper like this, okay? And what he did was, he colored them. If you can see what I'm going to show is he colored them like this. Okay, he took three strips of sticky notes. So this is the next strip, it's green. The first was red and the last one, I didn't have any other colors, so yellow, okay. So he took three strips of paper, okay, cut them and cut the adhesive side, the part where the glue is, no? That's what he did. And then you know what he did? He took my violin, okay, and he basically pushed this. See, I'll show you the close up. What he did was that he basically pushed this underneath, okay, the strings, so it went underneath like this, okay, dragged it all the way up to here, and he stuck it somewhere over here 
like that. See that? He did that. That's what he did. Now, this is the first trick. Your violin doesn't have frets. It's not like the guitar, where the guitar has frets. Okay? You know where to put your fingers. You don't know where to put your fingers, but with a fret, with this symbol, you know where to put your fingers. Okay? And you should put your index finger on this. Okay? You put your index finger on this. That's the rule. Okay? I'm keeping the guitar back now. Okay? Let's go back. So yeah, so this is the first, the first thing which we did. The second thing what he did was that, so he layered the other strips of paper over here and I'm going to show you where to layer them. But look closely at this, you see, there's a little bit of a gap over here. Mine has become a little cross. Okay, let's set right it, yeah, it's straight. Okay, and he's going to add, we're going to add two more over here. The second thing you must do when your violin is fully tuned, okay, is put the next one, okay. So I'm going to show you how to do it. One second, let's get a close-up shot again. Second one, push it underneath. Now see, the second one is a little tricky. You need to give a small gap, okay, a small gap over here okay yeah this should be right this is the small gap that you give okay between the two okay this is right okay so this is the second thing and the third okay the third one immediately comes next to this okay you see that there you go that's it we are ready. I have never seen a fretted violin in my life before, but this is a fretted violin. But the only thing is, you need to know if it is properly in tune. That happens if your violin is already in tune and you follow this, it's mostly going to work. But the spacing over here, you need to be careful of, right? So, there's only one way to find out. This red one, right? If you place, okay, if you place your fingers over here, there has been some distance. Yeah. So basically the thing is, Basically, the rule is this particular, if you press on this, on the second string, it should reflect over here. Okay. We'll get to that in a bit. So, this is basically the jugad that we did. Okay. The jugad that some violin teachers do. Okay. Most of them try to do it. But then not everybody is able to actually like, you know, give these, these lessons have been passed on. So if the violin, the violin doesn't have frets, that's why it's a difficult instrument. So what you do, you add frets to them and you add frets like this. Now, how do you know? Now the problem is, what is the space between this? What is the space between this? These are the questions that you will have when you confront. And there's only one way to know, okay? Basically, okay, if you take the second string over here, which I'll show you. you take the second string over here okay if you put your if you if you touch this particular one okay the red one okay it should reflect the note which is the the, the string which is before it so basically if you're placing your finger over here then it should reflect the note above same thing over here if I put my finger and press this particular part okay it should reflect the string above it is slightly off so you have to layer it once again push a little bit on this I recommend this is a jugad but someone needs to be there it could be a friend it could be 
it could be a teacher it could be the person in the shop also people in the shops don't underestimate them they know their stuff almost there so basically little more it's a little difficult job but once you do this you are set this will help you play your first song I'm going to show you how it's going to work out in a minute. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So that is how that is the spacing. If you guys want to take a screenshot of this, this is one in tune. is one in tune so if you guys want to go ahead and take a screenshot you may yeah this is in tune so this is how you make the instrument easier this is a trick that we learned early on so once you do this and once your violin is in tune you are ready to play okay the second step after you do this is you take your hand okay your left hand hold like a mirror we're not going to use the board this time leave the board tuck the board the board doesn't exist okay so basically take your left hand facing you this is called the neck of the violin not a fretboard like a guitar because there are no frets this is the neck sorry about that so what you should do is that you should place your hands like this and you should carry your violin like you're carrying a baby you see this yeah, that's how we do it. When you're posing also, yeah, you can, you can pose like this. This is, this, is, this is totally fine. Okay. So basically, now what you do is that you place the yellow one. Okay. And let's zoom on that now. I'm sorry I'm making you zoom. But I think it gives you a better, better perspective. Okay. Yellow one is for your index finger. The green one is for your middle finger. And the red one is for your ring finger okay so that's basically how it is you need to basically put your index finger middle finger and your ring finger like this this is the typical violin position that beginners learn okay the typical violin position that beginners learn is this okay so i think this is a pretty good tip and this is something that you can use so take your violin out if you have a violin if you're buying a violin ensure that you do this because it's easy for you to learn your finger positions well because we don't have frets to guide us right so we need to use these finger positions and whenever you take your violin try to instantly grab this pose okay okay instantly grab this pose where your index finger is on the yellow strip your middle finger is on the green strip and your ring finger is on the red strip okay now Starters for the violin. There are four strings on the violin. Okay, there are four strings that you can see on the violin, and these four strings are named G, D, A, and E. How do they sound? G, D, A, and E. So basically, again, okay, we are not going to follow the guitar metric. Of the, of the sixth string, the first string away from you. I mean, that metric is there, but what is better and what is more appreciated by violinists and by violin teachers is that people remember what is the order of the thing. So we start from the string which is facing you and we end with the string which is facing towards the floor. You can remember the names of the strings and it's very important for you to remember the names of the strings. We'll get to know why in the coming classes, but it is important for you to know what is the name of each string? So it is G, D, A, and E. Right? These are the sounds, the four strings that are there. Without pressing anything, these are the four strings. Now, there's, an, uh, there's a mnemonic for this. A mnemonic is basically a group of words. I mean, like, you know, a group of alphabets on which you can do. So this is the second tip I'm giving you. G, D, A, and E. Go, dress, and eat. Something our mothers always told us when we were getting late for school. Go, dress, and eat, and then go to school. 
okay so go dress and eat g d a and e go dress and eat i wish i had a board i'm probably going to get one board soon so that i can write it down for you so that is the second most important thing you should learn put these things over here and know your string names i'll tell you why third very important thing is now you remember we covered right which finger goes on which strip okay it's fairly simple okay now what you should do is you should number your fingers number your fingers like this show you your index finger is finger number 1 your ring uh, your middle finger is finger number 2 your in your ring i'm sorry your middle finger is finger number 2 your ring finger is finger number 3 okay and when you don't play any finger like this it is zero so basically zero i'm playing the second string okay the second string over here and what is the second string remember go dress and eat so you i think know what the second string is go dress so dress d d is the second string okay so now basically take your hand gently hold this and don't hold it some people tend to hold it like this you don't have to worry it's not going to fall okay light okay there should be gap always and the same thing goes with the guitar as well so now take finger number one finger number two and finger number three remember these things put them on so basically when you when when i say one put it over here when i say two put it over here when i say three put it over here so one two three one two three one two three one two three, one, two, three. this is how you practice we're not even producing any sound when you want to produce sound you gently press it and i'm taking the second string go dress and eat i'm taking the second string and i'm basically playing so zero one two three let's play zero one two three and see how it sounds zero okay the second string zero one two three see And in this, okay, I might be getting it right, but in the beginning, we may tend to play, okay, we may tend to do that. So be careful when you're holding it. So I'm not asking you to immediately hold it like this. I'm asking you to keep it like this, okay, carry it like a baby, okay, place your thumb over here, use only your thumb to pluck it and go zero, one, two, three, zero, one. You know how Sarigama was founded? Sarigama is basically what we call the whole Sarigama Paranisa is an octave of music. It is basically the 0, 1, 2, 3 on the second string and 0, 1, 2, 3 on the third string. You want to see how it's done? I'll show you in a bit. So see here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm in the third string. So basically, so I'm starting from second string, 0, 1, 2, 3, then go to the next string, 0, 1, 2, 3, okay, this is okay, so that is all what is there to learn how to produce sound, but that's not going to be the first song I'm going to teach you, you know the song Dilbar Dilbar, Dilbar Dilbar, Dilbar Dilbar, Okay, I sing really bad, but yeah, the song Dilba Dilba, right? You can just utilize this only and play it. This can be your first song, okay? And it's really nice. Hold on. Yeah. So basically, the song sequence for Dilba Dilba is, let, let's figure it out, okay? Huh. So it is zero, 01, zero, 01. Two one two one, okay. Two one two one, and I'm playing it on the second string. So second string, zero one zero one. Two one two one. If you want to play it first, dilber dilber, dilber dilber. Okay. So basically, 
it's zero one zero one two one two one zero one zero one two one two one and then it goes the song goes like this okay but we are not going to cover that section over here let's stick to tel ba tel ba So zero one zero one 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 zero one zero one one one, and that's how it basically is. Zero one zero one two one two one, and you're done. Dilbar Dilbar is your first song. Take it and go. But don't use a bow till now. Take your violin. Make sure it's in tune. Tape these guys. Remember your fingers. So what is zero? Zero is open. Okay, but you should specify the string. So second string zero is open. Third string zero is again open, but it's third string. Zero on the fourth string is like this. Okay, zero on the first string is like this. Okay, and actually it is number four three two one, not one two three four. So fourth string, third string, second string, and first string. But all the zeros are basically called open strings. Zero for O, zero is basically an open string. Open string means you're not placing any fingers over here. So that is how you start to produce sound on the violin, but you can also go and boast because you can also play dilbar dilbar, and it's so easy to play. It's so easy to play. You can easily do it. So yeah, that's how easy it is. And another song, if you're not comfortable with dilbar dilbar, or when you play dilbar dilbar, you want to play one more song, you take the standard one, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Okay, I didn't want to bring this song up. But then it is an important song. It is a song you will read in every single beginner violin book. Mary had a little lamb, or Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or all of these melodies repeat there, right? So the first line of Mary had a little lamb. Try to master that also. I'm going to show you that in a bit. So this will be slightly complicated. It's not as easy as Dilber Dilber, okay? So we go the first one, okay? Mary had a little lamb. So basically, two one zero one two two two. Get that? Write this number down. Two two one zero one two two two. Mary had a little lamb. Okay. And then, how do you play the rest of the song? Then, if you have noted this, two one ha, huh? two one zero one two two two. Then next is next in the series is one one one. Then it is two third string. So basically, it is two 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 one 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 a string. Okay, third string. Uh, yeah, second string. Considering the position. Then, but I would still recommend go for the first line of it. Cover that alone. So basically, it is two one zero one two two two. That's it, right? And now, if you're comfortable, once you're comfortable playing these two, okay. Once you're comfortable playing. Once you're comfortable playing these two, the Dilber Dilber and the first line of Mary Had a Little Lamb, what I would encourage you to do, which I didn't do, okay, I was, I mean, like uh, when I went to class, I was not encouraged to do this, but this will help you in the long run, is you learn how to hold instead of playing like this, which is easy, we are holding it like a mini guitar or a uke or ukulele, hold it like this. Now you see in the violin, right? This particular part is where you keep the side of your jaw, okay? It's you don't keep your. It's not like this. It's like this. Okay. So you basically you keep this. You sandwich slightly. Okay. And you see, I have my my uh, the bands over here as well. The frets we can call them. Okay. And again, I have to be careful to know where I'm placing them. Okay. I place them like this. And then what I do is instead of playing. What I do instead is I play. I take my index finger over here and play. 
zero one zero one. I'll get a close up of that for you guys. Yeah, see. Zero one zero one second string, okay. Two one. So you need to practice, but don't bend like how I'm bending, okay? See that? That is what. That is what you can do, okay? So after you are comfortable playing, after you are comfortable playing that, go like this, keep your hand like this and play. So here you will get a chance to see where you are going wrong, okay? It's a bit difficult, but that's how you have to start off. And only when you are ready with this, should you actually think about holding the bow right and playing you can play with these frets again so basically but don't use a bow till now it sounds good it sounds great don't touch your bow get used to this okay from this you go to this with the finger flick uh, with the finger picking and then use the bow now what is this finger picking called? For all the people who want to become musically inclined and even for you guys who just want jargon, you like jargon, it's called pizzicato. Okay? Some people call it pizzicato, some people call it pizzicato because it's the Z, right? So it's also a lot of people also do call it as pizzicato. P-I-Z-Z-I-C-A-T-O. That is the other word, the Italian word for plucking your string. Okay? Usually Pizzicato is usually better when you hold a bow, okay, you extend your index finger and you go That's pizzicato and arco is when you use the bow This will all be written there in the music books So when you read a manuscript of music, right, it will tell you if they want you to pluck the strings, you've seen, you know, in some nice big orchestras and all, suddenly all the, they are playing like, you know, something soulful like. Then. They immediately go like that. And they finish like that. So this comes, this whole string plucking thing comes in between. Uh, or even comes as a finisher or comes as embellishments in a particular piece, in orchestral pieces mostly, not in pieces that we usually play for people around. So you start playing like this, then you graduate pluck plucking your strings like this, then you try using your bow. Okay? So those are the simple ways by which you can play. I'm not giving you one song, I've given you two songs. Okay? But I told you this jugar, and I'm telling you that this has helped me a lot. So tomorrow, I know that even without these bands, I can play. Let's remove them. Okay, for those of you who want a last look, this is how it looks like. Mine went a little tear up because of the glue. It went off because I was playing, right? So yeah, you just have to stick it well. You, use, you stick it with the ends of it, you stick it with cello tape, okay? The neck part, stick this whole region with cello tape, okay? And then, after two, three months, you can remove them completely okay but you have to strive towards removing them for me this was a big achievement removing these okay it was a big big achievement and no longer i called first string second string or finger number one or finger number two you can read or you can hear and play <laughs> Okay, you can get to this level and believe me, it's easy. The next live I'm going to go, I'm going to show you how to use your bow and play. So, how do you play it? What is the first exercise? How do you use the bow? How do you hold? But this is just the beginner thing and I want you to have a good and a fun session because you can now play two songs. So, go ahead, get a person to tune up your violin. Okay, get a shopkeeper to tune up your violin. 
stick these particular things and say that you want these things to be stuck. Till now, if you notice, I haven't told you any names for any nodes except for the open strings. And always remember, the strings, okay, the strings that we have over here, there are four strings, okay, your fingers are one, two, three, four, zero means you pluck a open oh. string, one means you hold the yellow part, okay, that you saw that first, okay, then you hold the green patch for number two, and you hold the red patch for number three. If there is zero, that means you pluck an open string, right? This is, I think this is pretty much clear and it's pretty easy to understand. So if you guys have made it to the end of the video and you guys are pumped to go and play that violin or to buy that violin or to get that violin or to go and meet a teacher, I'm really, really happy for you guys. And for those of you who are thinking somewhere in the back of my mind, hey, this looks easy, I would really recommend go and buy yourself a violin. It's never too late or never too early to learn. It's always time, okay? And it is a demanding instrument, but I'm telling you, of all the instruments that I've played, this particular instrument has been the has been the instrument where I was most expressive. There are many reasons, technical reasons, as to why this particular instrument is able to bring out more charm, right? Because of certain intonation and certain techniques that you can do in the violin, that you can't really do much on the piano per se. Don't hate me pianists or keyboardists out there, but the violin does offer some crazy possibilities. So for all those reasons, I would recommend you to pick up your violin. Use this jukal that I used, okay? And if you want, I can help you to stick these things on your violin. I will drop my phone number as always. I will drop my email ID as always over there. We can always get on a call, on a video call, and I can help you to stick those particular pieces of paper, those frets, in the right places. And I hope you guys remember why we're doing it, because we need to know where our fingers have to go. We need to go where our fingers have to go, yeah, on the violin. And once you are ready, you can remove those those pieces of those frets. You don't need a fret anymore, okay? So thank you guys for tuning in to this live. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys are pumped up to play your first piece, Dilbar Dilbar, followed by Mary Had a Little Lamb. And I'm really, really happy to know that you guys are watching this video till now also don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel vishal kevin don't forget to hit that bell icon over there so that you get a reminder every time i release a new video or every time i'm about to go live you get to know these things so your next class you will know when it's going to happen also for those of you who are here i want to say that saturdays nine o'clock is i go live with the violin session so this is our first violin class so next Saturday, this time will be your second violin class. My guitar sessions are usually on Sunday at around the same time. And we are right now on lesson number three. Yeah, lesson number three is going to be tomorrow at around nine o'clock. So apart from that, I do release stuff on my Instagram. Go check me out on Instagram. Go check me out on Facebook. And also, again, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like and don't forget to comment. And let me know if I can help you out in any way, whether it's buying a violin or whether it's playing your first piece. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you.